Hello and welcome to a short tutorial on how to make class groups with your students' email addresses in Google. First, you need to collect your students' information using a form. Go to Google Drive and click on New, and then go to More and choose Google Forms from the list. This will open a new Google Form that you can use to collect the data. It is good practice to always title your form. Click on Untitled Form to give it a better name. It will make it easier to find this document later on. I'm going to call it Class Groups. Click OK and it will change the name of the document and the title of the document. If you'd like to title it something else so that it makes more sense for your students, that's fine as well. The first thing you need to do is automatically collect respondents' usernames. This will make sure that the username, the Gmail that you collect, is correct. Students may type in their email address incorrectly if you ask them to type it in themselves. Uh, then it's very simple. You could actually set up the form um, with just one more question asking students which class period they have your class. But I take this opportunity to also collect students' preferred name. Many of our students have um, two first names and they, they prefer to use Juan Pablo or sometimes they prefer to be called JP. So this is a good opportunity to collect that information so that you could add it to your gradebook or just for your knowledge. So what I would say is enter the question title, first name, and then enter as the help text Please enter the name you prefer or your nickname, and you can clarify that in class for students. You don't have to um, ask that question that way, but I prefer to do it that way. Always make sure you require that question, and then click Done. Click on the arrow next to Add Item so that you can add a new text item to ask students to enter, enter their last name. This just helps later on, again, you can use this, the results of this form for a variety of other purposes. So having this data in one form with the class period and students' first and last names and email addresses can make things easier later on. Then finally, the question that's most important is a multiple choice question. Which class period do you have? Language arts, history, honors, science, whatever your class is and then you can enter in the class periods as the options. Please do not use a text question for this because later on it will be more difficult to organize these answers if they are not consistent. Again, make sure that this is a required question and then click Done. There it is. That's a quick little survey for students to fill out. You can always add more questions if you'd like to collect information about students' thoughts about your class or about your subject in general, this is a great place to, to learn something about your students at the beginning of the year. When your form is ready, click on View Live Form at the top of the page. This takes you to the live form that students will fill out. You can share the link with students on your class website or you can copy it into a link shortening website to right on the blackboard at the beginning of the year, but you need to share the link to this with your students so that they can fill it out so that you can collect the information. At this point, you need to collect the information before you can move on to the next steps. So, please pause the video or stop the video and return when you have collected the data that you need. Now that you have collected your students' data, you can return to your Google Drive and you'll notice that there are two documents with the name class groups. The first one is the form itself. The second document with responses in the title is the one we need now. It is the spreadsheet where all of the data was collected. Let's open that spreadsheet. You will find your data organized nicely, but you may find that some students uh, answered the form before others so that the class periods are not quite in the right order. Click on the arrow at the top of the column with your class period data and then select Sort Sheet 
A to Z from the list. This will sort the students by class period, making it easier to copy their email addresses by class period. Then you need to highlight and copy the class period that you're interested in first. So I'll start with first period. I will highlight the last name on the list, drag up to highlight the first name on the list and select everything in between, right click and choose copy. To create my groups, I'm going to open a new tab and click on the apps icon and choose contacts. You may already have group lists from previous years. If you would like to delete any of your groups from previous years, click on the group that you would like to delete, then click on more and click on delete group. Confirm by clicking OK. You will see a message at the top of your screen confirming that you have deleted that group. Return to the sidebar and scroll down to click on New Group to create a new group. Give your new group a name. I recommend putting the number at the beginning of the name because later on when you are typing uh, the group name into documents or emails, it will make it easier and less typing. So I used P1LA because the, the period one will identify it and make it easier to find later on. Click on your new group in the sidebar to open it and add your students. Email addresses. It will appear empty. Click on the plus people button or the add to P1LA group button at the top and then paste the email addresses that you copied from your spreadsheet into the box and click Add. It will confirm that the number of contacts have been added to your group called P1LA or the, whatever you called it. All right, I would like to demonstrate this one more time. Click on New Group in the sidebar and give it a good name. So this one for me would be Period 3 LA. Click OK. Click on the group name in the sidebar to open that group and see it blank. Then return to your spreadsheet and highlight the names next to the period 3 list. You can check by just dragging across to see where the blue box is, but be sure that you're only copying the actual email addresses. Click on the Add People button, paste the names, and click Add. It will confirm that it has added all of the students, and therefore it will be easy to add them to an email or to a document later on. For example, in an email, you can click on Compose, and then in the To box, start typing P1, and choose P1LA from the list. Your students' email addresses will populate the To field of the email, then it's up to you to add a good subject line and a message, and click Send. In Google Docs, you can also share a document with a whole class period. So for example, if I have a collaborative document I want students to be able to use, I would give it a good name. Then I click on the blue share button. In the people field, I start typing P1 and choose P1LA from the list. Then I choose how I'm sharing this document with my students. If they can edit the document, if they can comment on the document, or if they can view it. Obviously, if you want students to do work on the document, you want to choose Can Edit. If you merely want them to be able to comment, choose Can Comment. Add a message in the email field so that students will know what this document is for when they get to class. Then click Send. Collecting students' email addresses by class period can be helpful for these two reasons and for a lot more. If you'd like information about how you can create peer evaluation rubrics so that students can evaluate each other's work and have those organized very easily for you, please let me know, or for using Google Forms for any other reason. I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching.